Hey, Dad. No. <laughs> All right, we're live. YouTube, we're live. Facebook. One more. The IG. She almost put it like in the center of the screen to line up with the other camera. Yeah, but then I can't like look at the comments. Well, look at on your phone. Yeah, we can on my phone. On Instagram, you want me to do? Yeah. So you can do Facebook here, Instagram? Yep. All right. So once you go by, I'll go on so you can see all the comments a little bit. Excellent. We're really getting good at this. The beginning of live videos have got to be boring for like you watch them after the fact. Actually, it's probably boring right now. Story. Excellent. That turned off. Live and go. All right. Live, live, live. Joe, you good? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Give him a cheerful welcome. A cheerful welcome. Welcome. Uh, welcome to Virtual Trade Show, day four. Four out of five. We're going live every day this week. Um, tomorrow will be the last day. So if you're here now, welcome. <laughs> Trev just started his live video so he could keep track of comments. Um, so that said, you guys have questions this whole time, throw them in the comments section. Um, we're going to get to them. If we don't answer your comment or your question, just send it again. Um, today is all about the setup. So we're going to be talking about what we pack, how we pack it, um, how we start our climb, and even how we get set in the tree. So everything you want to know about okay. setting up and climbing. Um, so just quickly on wildedgeinc.com up to 20% off all our flagship products. So that means stepladder, berserker, uh, battlement, what else? Lines, our tactical lines, our regular lines and lines, the duck, all that's on sale. Um, so go check out wildedgeinc.com. Take advantage of the sale now through Sunday evening, Eastern, uh, 1159 Eastern standard time Sunday. Um, that sale will be live. Who do you want to go first, Trev? Whatever you want, buddy. You want to go first? You're not ready. Go first. You go first. All right, so let's get it going. Um, also, we're doing a free giveaway for the Berserker, and stay tuned today. We may have a surprise giveaway for somebody who's active in the comments. So if you're commenting, you're active, we'll pick a random winner even today um, for something fun. So stay the whole time, and you could get lucky. Please, you can give away the whole house. <laughs> Yeah, it's called moving out. <laughs> and he's gone. All right. So Reinhardt is here. Nutto, how's it going? Justin Deck Hunt joined. Welcome. Platinum Pursuit Outdoors. How's it going, Marin? All right. What else we got? Let's make sure. We're live on YouTube and Facebook. Looks good. All right. And again, today we're joined by Trev from the Outdoor Drive podcast. Uh, so he's going to help us out today. We're going to go through. Uh, we'll start with Drew, show you guys his setup, move on to Trev, and if there's time, we'll get to me. So, all right. Cool. All right. So <clears throat> I'm not going to go through my preset setup. We're going to do that another time, but I'm just going to focus on my mobile setup. I'll kind of go through the difference between when I'm hunting on a kayak and when I'm hunting just mobily in the big woods uh, or just accessed by land. So I'll start by going through my pack, everything I have in it, and I'll just kind of climb on the pole right here as if I was going in and actually hunting. Yeah, and this is my pack right here. Don't ask me what it weighs because I don't know. But I just have, basically I have everything in here that I would hunt with minus a couple little things. Um, I have a set of eight steps right here. I have the perch platform on the back. So this is why I love bags with straps that are on the back of the pack. Because on the way in, sometimes I would put the steps on the inside of the bag. But right now I'm just showing that I have a big outer layer jacket in there. So a lot of times when I'm kayaking in or walking in mobily, you're sweating your balls off. So my layers are going to be in my pack so they stay dry. They stay, they stay protected. I used to tie a lot of my layers to the outside of the pack. 
but a couple times going through thick briars and brush, the jacket got ripped off. And uh, so I like to keep my layers protected. The steps are not gonna get ripped off. So they're secure here with the perch. Um, then I have all my different gear, range finder and everything, bow hanger in the pack. So this is the way I would walk in. Um, so I can start by just a couple of little tricks. These are the knee pads that I rock. They're from Amazon. They're basketball knee pads. So like spandex little leggings that you put on that uh, have some good cushion, not a ton of cushion. The problem I found with plastic knee pads that you can buy is when you put your knee against a tree, it tends to want to slip slip and slide on the bark. So these go obviously under your pants and you don't know they're there. And I've, they're like 10 bucks on Amazon. So they work awesome. When I'm kayaking in or canoeing or by boat, water access, this is a sweet life jacket. Uh, the second it hits water, it will inflate or you can pull the cord to inflate it. Um, so it's sleek out of the way. So I always wear that. Uh, when I'm accessing by water, it's a, uh, there's a ton of brands, but this one's a Mustang. Mustang Survival. That's pretty cool. So as I'm going in, saddles on my, around my waist, backpacks on. So what I would do right here, sounds stupid, but... I'd have some kind of under layer on, jacket, a thin layer or sweatshirt, whatever it is. And again, dump pouches are great. I just never really found a need for them. I take my lines and rope slash tether, shove it right in my shirt, bow hanger. Every hunting pants, every pair of hunting pants I have has a cargo pocket. So my bow hanger will go right in a cargo pocket. I'm just wearing jeans right now, but get the point there. So this would be in a cargo pocket. And then to make sure my lines in line never goes anywhere, I always wear the sternum strap as well. So I would, again, 99% of the time carrying the bow in. Uh, release would be in my hand if it was daylight. When it's dark, release is right here in my side pocket of my waist belt. Range finders over here, daylight. Um, most of the time I would also have my range finder around my neck tucked into my jacket. So the second I get to the tree, I'd put my bow down, take my back off. Perch comes off, steps come out. And then sometimes, since I'm not gonna be able to climb high, I'm gonna put my bow on my backpack. Um, but a lot of times I would hang it by my saddle. I guess I, I could hang it by my saddle. So 99% of the time, if there's not a lot of limbs or branches to go around, I'm gonna keep my saddle, my bow attached to my saddle on a carabiner on the back. So I'll do that. Otherwise, I would attach it to the backpack. Again, that's why I like straps on the back side of it. So I put my pack back on. Grab my lines in line. I always girth hitch it through the loop. And in my pack, I also have a backup lines and line tether. I have a, in my pack, I have a, the wild edge line kit, which is eight millimeter rope with the Kong duck argon carabiner, or oval one carabiner. Um, it's in my pack because you never know if you forget your rope or you lose it, whatever happens, I would never want to get to a tree and not have a tether or a lines and line. So that's girth hitched around my lines and loop. Steps, go over my shoulder. Unzip the bag a little bit. Again, that's why I keep the rope nice and neat, oiled up. 
and I'll bring the ropes up, push them to the side, zip the bag back up a little bit. My perch, go right here. Again, you can hang it off your saddle, but I like to just keep it right here. Lyman drove around the tree. Book it back in for double safety. Now, sometimes I'll put the first couple steps on without booking in. But if I was going for a smooth climb um, and I didn't, I only had to get, I didn't have to get high. I put the steps nice and easy to climb. Um, so, you know, I'd space them two and a half, three feet apart. If I got to a tree and I said, I have to get a lot higher than I thought I needed to get. I say I wanted to get to a nice crotch of a tree or that just had the best cover or had to get over some brush or over some obstacle to shoot. Um, I could, like I said the other night, I do the half pull up system. So I put a step right here, then a step up here. I grab this step, put my foot against the tree, and get up to that step. Um, but just for the height of the pole right now, we're going to pretend that my platform is going to be right here. Um, so again, steps around the tree. So say my first step is right here. And then my bow would be hooked my back on a carabiner hook to my wrist strap my bow is hanging right there so this is my platform we're going to lower it just for the video so say i'm standing on a step i climbed whatever 15 20 feet i'm tied in i now start my platform um, but a lot of times what i would do is i put my platform i figure out my platform height I jump up onto this step and make sure that I have the good visibility in shooting lanes. Say I had to tweak it around the tree, I had to lower it or raise it to get over some limbs or shooting lanes because 99% of the time I'm hunting hardwoods, um, rarely ever an open field. So I would actually set my platform right, I would get up on the platform, say on this step, okay, that's a good height. Get back down, I'd get under my platform and put my platform up kind of at the level of my head. Uh, but just for video purposes, we're going to pretend that I'm, be I'm below the step. Take the perch out. Take all the slack out of the rope. Cam it over. And if I want to do a ring of steps, again, it's a lot easier when your your face is on level with the steps. Now bring it around, tie it right in front of me. And then I pull it around the tree, cam it over. So say I want to do it, if I had extra steps, do another one. And then I always like to Tuck my ropes in so they're not flapping around. So I'll just bring them around and cinch them back into the rope. And then I'll have another step up here, which will be my bow hanger and my backpack hanger. So I'll keep this nice and loose. Grab me that bow hanger. Again, my bow hanger would be 
in your cargo pocket. Be in a cargo pocket. So a coal hanger goes on the back side of the step, right in the rope. And then I step up to my platform. And then, obviously, if I was at normal climb height, you want to tilt that camera up on the computer. This bag would be empty because um, I usually wouldn't have any more steps. So I would just fold the bag up and stuff it in my pack. So there, my bow's hanging up. I'm tied in. So now I take my pack off. That clips this either to the step here or right to the rope. And then a lot of times I'll lower myself down and I buckle the waist belt of the backpack to the tree. Because again, I don't like stuff flying around and flopping around. And then the way I load my pack right here is my range finder. Right here is my headlamp. So I know I'm going to need my range finder when I get set up. That'll get hung up. Or around my neck. I know on the way down I'm gonna need a headlamp, so that's right there. So everything's right where I need it. So now right here. And again, beginners, I suggest to use two ropes. So now if you had a dump pouch, you'd pull out your tether and tie it in with your lines and rope connected. Um, but what I do a lot of times is I will unhook my bridge, not unhook it, but loosen it. Always have an extra carabiner. Hook the carabiner right here. I can hook it to the step, right there to the step. So I'm locked in. Boom. Unhook my lines in line. On girth hitch it. Hook it back to my bridge. Unhook my bridge from the step. And then now I just start tweaking everything. Carabiner goes back on my saddle. I want to lengthen my bridge a little bit. Make sure everything's hooked up. Boom. So right now, everything's pretty much hooked up. Then I go through the final details. I take my quiver off. Boom, grab another carabiner. Put my quiver on the back side of the tree so it's out of the way, but an easy reach for another arrow. Range finder would come out and either go around my neck um, or I'd hang it from this right here. Most of the time it'd go right around my neck. Boom, and then my release would pretty much always be on me. But if not, I know it's always in that pocket right there. Release would go back in my pocket or hook my bow, I'd knock an arrow. And I'm pretty much ready to roll. Um, and then after, you know, if it's cold, if it's cold weather, I would then pull my jacket out of my pack. I'd put my jacket on. We'll pretend I put that on. I close this up a little bit. Open up 
open this pocket back up. And then here I have my water. I'll either put my bottle, you know, because Gatorade bottle will fit right in the step, or I'll just keep it right here in the bag so it's easy, easily accessible. Um, grunt call would either be in my pocket, or I know it's always right here in the front. So basically everything is right here the way I need it. The bow is an easy reach. Uh, sometimes I would put this step a lot higher so that I, so I say I didn't wear knee pads, so I could use a backpack as a knee pad. Uh, sometimes I'll take the backpack and flip it around and use the entire backpack as like a as a pad on the tree. But again, you can still use the backpack as a knee pad. Works out pretty slick. But uh, yeah, this is the basic setup. And with the battlement, I can show you how I pack the battlement. It's a little different. It's pretty much the same as a perch, a little different with the bracket. I keep the bracket open and put them on top of the steps uh, instead of folding it over. But with the battlement, I may have one step on, the, on one side, but usually it either be just a battlement and a step. I usually would not do a step on each side because you have a lot more mobility with the battlement. With the perch, I love having a step on each side, but I've also gone to trees where it's like, shit, I need to get higher, so I'm not going to have steps on each side with the perch, so you can, just roll with it. Can you show what you're using for your clip for your bow? The what? The clip for your bow, that you clip your bow onto. Oh, yeah, it's just a carabiner. So it's our Argon S carabiner. So I would always have one that's taped. I used it on accident for the quiver, but... That's uh, I would always tape it and either clip it to the cam or clip it to the wrist strap. Uh, with the wrist strap, it's a, lot, a little more stable. Uh, but then again, if I'm going around limbs and the tree's kind of crazy, I'm going to make sure the back the bows on my backpack. I don't. The easiest way to do it is have you know a you know, piece of rope, 550 cord, or whatever, and have your bow on the ground. But there's been a lot of times where I'm climbing and deer start coming in, so I just feel. I'm kind of nervous having my bow on the ground where there's a chance that if a deer's coming in and my bow's on my back or on my saddle and I'm climbing, I could get into position to actually kill the deer. So that's just a mental thing for me, but you know, the bow is right here. And this is, like I said, the beauty about the steps and the perch. Right now I could either stand just on the perch, I could put my heels on the perch and my toes on the step, or I could shove my heels in the step like a stirrup and I'm totally locked in. So especially when you're going to your offside shots. So as a righty, your hard shot would be to the right. I can jam my toe into that step and I have full mobility and I don't feel like I'm gonna swing. Um, and then you can also, I can, or I can stick my heel in the step so I have full motion and feel totally secure instead of trying to stand on one, one platform and trying to get around the tree because you you have that point where you feel like you're going to go one way. And that's a scary point, especially if you're nervous, you got buck fever, you know, it's your whole body's moving, you're shaking the tree. So the anchor point of the step is uh, pretty sweet. And then on the way down, I would then unhook my back. I would put my bow back together, hang it back on my saddle. I'd start putting my bow, everything back into my backpack. Headlamp goes on if it's an afternoon hunt. Um, steps on cam from the tree, hold the rope. I drop them nice and neat, gently around the area of the tree, not on top of each other, not in a rock. You know, it just sounds like an acorn hitting the ground. And then when I get to the bottom of the tree, I would then stack the steps organize them, make them nice and neat, put them back in the bag, then reorganize my pack. That's pretty much the gist. Any questions? Yeah, got a couple of uh, comments coming in. This one's a little bit off topic, but maybe you can answer it quickly. Um, Bill McLaughlin says, this may be slightly off topic, topic, but I have a few questions or comments. To be honest, I didn't know your saddle existed and bought my cruiser, uh, my bad. Problem I'm having is the waist belt consistently comes loose because it's silky and it's frustrating as hell. What's your waist strap material and will it loosen up? Our waist belt is a, it's a nylon material. It's a climbing rated webbing. Um, and this, this waist belt with the buckle, I've never had it come loose. 
So on the, on the way in, I cinched my waist belt super tight um, and my leg strap super tight. And with a lot of other saddles, I found myself, once I got up into the tree, loosening them because they were, the way the leg straps were, are on most saddles, they come straight up where these are buckles are to the side. So I never found myself loosening the leg buckles much. The waist buckle, I used to always undo too. But then the problem was, then you had a buckle in the center that was loose and it's metal on metal and it's jingling around making noise. Anytime you moved or hit it or you tap it with the cam of your bow where every buckle here, my waist buckle is all the way over here. My leg buckles are all the way back here. So nothing's in the way, nothing's hitting each other. So again, a lot of other saddles, I find myself loosening stuff. These, I tighten them up. I may loosen the waist belt a little bit once I get up to the tree, but I, we've never had a problem with them loosening. Awesome. He says, I also have um, a couple of your eight millimeter ropes and carabiners. Uh, I use them with a rope man too. And then the needle like teeth seem to be causing small burrs in the rope against the rope man too. If you had that. That's what, you know, we, we use, that's why we recommend the duck or the kiss line. I've never had ropes, eight millimeter ropes wear out um, from the teeth with the duck. Is there, it's a different type of tooth. Yeah, it's a less aggressive tooth than the. All right, what else we got? Practice, practice, practice. Nice system from Kevin Nielsen. Um, Ryan Mott's really liking the packability of the step ladder. Jim says the steps are amazing and never thought to use one or two extra to hang the ear. Uh, Edwin says, Hi, Kevin, is there a specific twist in the rope when you tie with the loop you just used to tie your steps? Yeah, I can, I can go over that real quick once I get down. There's two methods to do it, original method, and then uh, some guy in Saddle 100 years ago showed us a method, um, and that's pretty much what I, I found myself using that nine out of ten times, especially with a longer tail end, so you're not whipping the rope around back through, so it's pretty slick I could show that. All right, what else we got here? Would you use okay. more adjustments on your bridge rather than on the tether? Honestly, I I barely ever, once I find, I, so every tree is different. So once I find the comfort of where I'm leaning, I tend to lean back a lot more than most people. So especially like when my feet are on the steps, I'm leaning back like this, you know, knees against the tree. Um, I rarely ever adjust the tether or the bridge. But what I will adjust is as I'm sitting, say I feel like I'm getting more pressure on my legs. I can either open the seat for a different position, pull the back up, so I have a whole different feeling, or take pressure off and just rotate your ropes on your bridge loops. So you rotate them down. Now I have more pressure on my waist. You pull them up, I don't have more pressure on my legs. So that's, that's the main part that I'm adjusting is my ropes on my bridge loops. Um, crow boy, best demonstration I've seen for wild edge steps. You make it look way easier than I do, but the process gets easier as you use. Great demo. It makes me regret buying sticks. Uh, someone said, use to carry an aider on the site. Do you not use them anymore? I go back and forth. I just, uh, aiders are great. I just personally found myself lack of better terms, I felt like a monkey fucking a football every time I used aiders. Um, I'd be dropping stuff, I'd be I'd be sweating more, I'd be just, I, I wouldn't be going slow and smooth, I'd be making more noise and I just didn't, for me it just didn't fit. So that's why I just, I carry more steps. So I'll carry four or five more steps than the average guy, even six more steps than the average guy using aiders because to me, four or five more pounds means nothing. Um, so I just throw it in the pack and I go because I found myself being quieter and smoother, climbing with more steps. Um, the couple aiders I have used, I just made loops on the step ladder rope, hung them around each rung and draped the rope down. But then again, it's just one more thing that I had ropes hanging off my hip. The five step atria, I've tried hundreds of times, but it's just, I just didn't feel safe doing it. Uh, I'm climbing 
on the way up is a lot easier, but coming down, especially in the dark, you're swaying, trying to find that foothold. I just, it, I just wasn't big on it, I'm making more noise, more commotion. Uh, the Nader Swayer is a great system. I found myself using more of the Nader on my knee as a hook. Uh, but then, you know, I kind of transformed back into, which I could show again, my half pull-up system of putting a step up at my chest, next step as high as I can reach, grabbing that high step, putting my foot against the tree and jumping up the step. Cause that's the beauty of the step is you have so many handholds to grab. You're not grabbing one little handle, you're grabbing, there's many ways to grab it. Somebody asked, uh, I like how the backpack has straps to secure the bow. What pack is that? It's the Badlands pack. Super day pack. Super day pack is what it's called. We get that question every day. What do you use to clean the bark out of and stuff out of the end of the steps, or do you just leave it there? I just let it be. Just leave it. It's not going to hurt anything. Any suggestions for bent steps? Yep, bend them back. Just get them in a... Yeah, you can put them in a vise or a truck hitch or... I've even had them in a tree. I accidentally bent it, so just put it back in another step or in a branch and you can bend it back. It's gonna wanna go back to its natural form. But just make sure when you're camming over, you have equal contact on each standoff and you can feel it when you're camming over. That's the biggest problem with guys using aiders bending steps is they're on their tippy toes trying to get their next step up as high as they can reach and they can't feel equal contact. They're just trying to cam it over hard. So pull it up and you can feel that pressure. We'll, we'll go over that either later today or tomorrow on uh, different knot tying uh, techniques and came in the step over and how can someone last hanging from that tree like that how long can somebody someone last guy from a tree like that guys do all day sits I've, I've never done an all day sit in my life I just have ADD I can't do it but Trev you do it I sit all day there's a that's a huge percentage of saddle hunting community hunts all day if I was in Illinois or Kansas, yeah, I'd hunt all day. Persistence, but, man. Persistence. I'm sure hard a big buck. Persistence. I don't hunt in Connecticut all day. When, I don't hunt in Connecticut all day. See, two, years, <laughs> two years. I use your steps as presets with the perch, and I repel down. Do you repel or climb down? I climb down. And, I, and I'll go over it because I use the – Pre, the steps as presets also. I, I've killed deer out of sets that I could literally jump out of the tree. I was, you know, six feet off the ground. Cool. Good. Oh, Bruce would require. How does anybody bend when I jump up and down on them at the show and wouldn't budge? Because there's a tiebreak. Who's next? Oh, geez, geez, geez. Get them, cowboy. I've never done this before. <laughs> Trevor's first time saddle hunting. Yep. I'll show you this side. They asked if I can show the side pressure on the adamant. I'll do that. Dave Collins is driving back from Warwick, Rhode Island, so you'll try not to wipe out. Careful driving, and we don't condone driving and watching YouTube videos, Dave. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We got, when the, when the perch came on. Oh, yeah. Oh, we didn't have to learn, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the other strap. Yeah, I'm sure they got. Oh, <laughs> hmm? Ryan, oh, wants, I know I got mine, so I'm Ryan wants to know if the steps are more difficult to use in the cold. In the cold, no. No, it's so the rope, the rigidity of the rope, it's very easy to adjust. That's why a lot of guys want to switch to amp steel. The problem with amp steel is it's it's such a soft rope, it's really hard to adjust. Um, do you want you want to do that later? I'll go over the ropes and techniques with the loop and everything. Sure. Okay. Yeah, we'll go over that in a little bit. Once Trevor's done, I'll jump on that and uh, go over the different rope techniques and 
I'll show you how the rope really works and the little minor adjustments. But so I'm a stick guy. I run the out on the limb sticks, uh, the shikars, to get up to hunting height, and then I put down the battlement, or I was running the perch on a step. But so when I get down to the tree, first thing, all my pack is all set in the back like this. My sticks are on there. My battlement. I got a step here. Uh, just about everything is all on my pack. So when I get to the tree, base of the tree, first thing I do is I get there, I swing. Uh, Wade, do you mind turning those down just a little bit? Yeah. Just so everyone can kind of catch up. You're pretty good on that one. We'll have to move it back up in a second. But... All right. So once I get to the tree now, I do one side in my backpack. Everything comes off to one side. It reveals my sticks. So I take my sticks. I'll just set up one stick just so that. So I have my car sticks. They're on uh, daisy chains with one step eighters. So they're just put together like so. Um, so I just take them, ties, take them apart. All right, so I have my one step here, stick. Snap them in here. Be a lot quicker with steps. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> so I set them up right. I set up one right at the base of the tree. And then as I go up, I set them up. So I got my step. I won't use the aider, but the aider's down there. So then I have the daisy chain. Obviously, it's a little bit lower. Here. This is a small tree, so okay. Right in there, boom, lock that bad boy in. Snap this back in. Like so give myself up. Find with the stick. So I use a dump pouch. So the first the last rope to go in is my linesman. So that's on top. Put myself in. So you're using the duck. Yeah, I'm using. So I have a duck, a common duck, with a carabiner. Lock that in. Now I'm there. And I'm getting up the hunt height. Boom, boom. We're going to turn it. So now my hunt height. You're going to have to. There you go. That one too? Yep. Oh. So then, then I would take my backpack, come off to one side, take my battlement off. A little cheeky. So my bow, I pull up my bow. I don't, um, I just have a regular 550 paracord. So then I have my battlement. Now mind you, I do all mobile hunting um, on, I don't have, I'm doing the same exact thing every time, so. So you just take pull it up, just like the steps. It's weird not not being up in the tree. Come up, sit down. Now, I like mine on a downward angle. Now I'm at hot night. Okay, he's got my saddle. All that. The next thing I grab out, so I grab my tether right out of here. Same thing on a calm duck with a carabiner. I hope mine a little bit lower. What did you have? Yeah, I know. Once I went back, it'll be good. 
I got that. So I don't have my bridge here. Now I'm locked in. I'm take this one. Actually, I leave that one on for a minute. The reason I do that is the last, the first thing that goes in my thing is my gear holder. So I have my gear holder. Put that on. The uh, one thing I did forget was I still have a step in my bag. So, so if I'm hunting just for a little little bit, I just run just the battlement. But if not, uh, if I'm doing like an all day, then that's when I set up a second step. So, okay. And the bag comes off. And one thing that I do instead of having the knee pads, I take this off. My dome pouch. So one thing that I do instead of having knee pads, I have a take one of these clips like this. I have one of the clips like this <laughs> that goes in the front, and then I can now kneel onto my backpack. My backpack I can kneel on. So when you are, Been a while, huh? Jesus. We're almost named off. Jesus. What in the world am I doing here? <laughs> Why am I having so much trouble? No, 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 no. Oh, that's what I was doing. I'm like, what in the world? I'm nervous. Sorry. <laughs> Trev's nervous. nervous. Huh? It's first time saddle hunting. Yep. I said that. There you go. Jesus. Yeah, Look, I never used it. So now I have to. So now I have to. Do you run under or I run over? What? Your step. I always run it up so then I can. Yeah. So can above the battle. Yep. It's normally lower, but I normally would set it up yeah, when so I was down. Like, yeah. So it's, it's easier when you're down saying, there. If he was down here and he knew his platform lay was here, it's a lot easier to set your platform and everything right here because he could have. I missed the step. He's going to easily gone. There we go. Like this. That step right there. Yeah. Or, down a little bit lower. or if you wanted lower, you can also. I've done a couple times. Just put the step rope around the bracket of the battlement. There we go. Right. I was in a rush to get up there, that's why. So then I can go on the off side. And that's pretty much it. So I don't know if you guys can see that the the step. I just ran the rope around the front of the bracket of the battlement and then came it over under the cinch strap. So it's more of more on plane with your mm -hmm. battlement. And then the same thing. So my bag is always right here. You want a bow to show? Yeah. So my bow just goes on. 
just out of my gear all there, same thing. I just put it, I'll put it on this side of it. These things are pretty easy on the ground. So my bow would be right here on this side, like so. I'll be able to grab my bow. My bow is right there, I'm right here. So if I'm kneeling down like so, I can just grab my bow. Like so. Like so. Like so. There's a roof in the way. Speak up, Charlie. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Am I, am I mumbling? Yeah. I'm used to that. Um, so and I can just grab my bow. My bow's right there. Swing right around. Well, well, do you, you take your quiver off? I do take my quiver off. Sure, yeah. So my quiver, then my quiver goes on the back, like so, like, like, like this. So? <laughs> <laughs> like this. So I'm pretty much at home height. Just so you, you can see that the advantage of having a dump pouch is that he was using his lines in line, and then boom, immediately went right away when he was done with it. And it's right there. And then his tether, boom, came out when he needed it. And then when he wants to come down, he was boom, take the his lineman line out, go around the tree, unhook his tether. So everything is just right there. You, you come and again, up with you, can get, you can get these dump pouches for like eight bucks on Amazon. That's a little, you just put on dump pouch on yeah. Amazon, they're like 10 bucks, yeah, 15 pouch. bucks. It's all yeah, for decent stuff. ones. Um, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, then when I go to go down, like you said, put the linesman around, take the tether, tether goes in the bag, my gear holder's inside my bag, and then I descend back down. Um, it's it's pretty easy. But And the same thing, my bag here is just pretty much the same. I'll normally strap this around, or what I do is I actually take it, and I clip the two back together and tighten down so then they're not, nothing's clanking around. It's all just right there. And if I need something, my pouch is right here. This one has my flashlight. And then this side here has my release, my range finder. Just pull it all out. It's all right there, nice tight. Nice thing about my backpack too being right here. Um, this one, I can snap it open. And all my stuff's right here. So if I need something, grunt, you know, get a grunt tube out, uh, anything you can kind of put it all inside. I kind of got a mess in there. Extra peg, uh, wind finder, stuff like that. Just always, everything's all right there. And it's just there. And then just zip it back up. Be in, and then you're on. Yeah, as, as simple as it sounds, that's why, you know, we I put the waist belt around the tree and cinch it because, you know, deer looking up. All this extra stuff, you know, you may think it looks like a leaf or something, but if they're focused on you and there's extra stuff moving around, that's just one more deterrent for them to bust you. Just kind of keep it in, you know. I mean, as far as they were talking about side pressure. Okay, let me grab this bow. God forbid I dropped that thing. It's dropped out of a tree before. Oh, yeah. I feel like the first freaking week you, <laughs> you got can it. You literally, yeah. I mean, you go all the way around. I'm 240 pounds. Here I put it on the side because there's a step. So again, seat. Trev's 240 pounds and he's putting all the side pressure. Oh, I forgot. It doesn't that. move at all. I mean, there is, I mean, it is in there. So, what, what you see flexing is the aluminum. The aluminum is flexing at 6061 uh, aluminum. So, it's going to flex, but it's not. It's not going to move off the tree. It's mainly because of the outer limb bracket that's on it. Super strong. Everybody loves that bracket. That's pretty much it. Trev, did you say what bag it is? What it's just doing? an Alps Outdoor bag. I don't know exactly. Alps Outdoors, I don't I really They have a couple different versions. It was just one I ended up getting. I just like it because there's a lot of pockets. So when you go on the inside, the same thing goes down like this. I normally have my camera arm in there, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, new style hunter, if you are right-handed, why do you have your bow on the left side? So that, well, <laughs> does your, your, if you're right-handed and you're facing the tree, you're going to grab the bow with your left hand. left hand. So as you set up in the tree, you say you're in a tight spot, you're going to want your, most of your shot opportunities to be on your left. So your left is your strong side. So you're setting so up. See how Trev can just grab the bow. You're grabbing it and here. And just turn where, as a righty, your right side, you'd have to either take your bow, go over your bridge, 
and swing, or you can go all the way around the tree and shoot. And the other so it's thing opposite. Is, so if it's on your right hand side, now I have to grab with my left hand to now come back over this way. So if it's on the left, I just grab my left hand, it's always there, and now I'm opening up and I'm shooting here. That's why when I say, as I'm climbing, I'll put my platform on, whether it's a perch and a step or the battlement, I'll jump up onto the platform, kind of look around, and sometimes I may tweak it where it's like, okay, I gotta turn, I gotta grab my platform and move it to this side of the tree or this side of the tree, or I have to go up another foot or down two feet because I have to get above or below that limb because I have a trail coming this way and this way. So I have to, so I, I get up there and kind of look and then step back down, set my platforms and then get back up. So one of the things I do too, when it comes to steps is, um, I, t I know that's, that's a doozy. Um, I do for steps is I have, I take three steps and I do a ring of steps on, on, so I'll climb up with my, my sticks to, to hunting height and I'll put my ring of steps up on, on the top up there. And then if I know I'm going to hunt that place again, obviously it's where I'm doing that. So then I just go up there, I stick up to it. Now I'm on my two steps. Now I'm on my platform. It's just like getting in a regular stand and I'm in a saddle. Um, or I carry, I'll put two up and I'll do one, one step with a perch. So I just go up there and I set the perch in. Now I have a platform with two steps on either side and I can just, I can hunt that way. And you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's a lot less work than having to set up uh, a platform and so on and so forth. So it just makes things a little bit easier Then you have your presets for the season. So there's good spots, good rut spots you want to be in constantly. You can go there and you can hunt those spots constantly and have a stand there. And it's one less thing that you have to do. And you know that you're going to that one tree. Oh, I guess the on some of the cameras it's backwards. So like the way the camera records is backwards from what you see. Oh, it's mirror image. It's mirror. Oh, so oh they're front facing, facing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oops. So like this one's forward facing, that one's front facing camera. So struggle. Uh, cool. So that question did make sense. It did make sense. Where you put your bone. <laughs> I don't want to get my stuff mixed up with yours. Because then I'll have to take all your stuff now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, got it. We're trying, we're trying. I'm not going to even go that. I'm just going to The biggest advantage of sticks is that they uh, double as a self-defense, home defense weapon. <laughs> These are brutal. <laughs> The shikar sticks you could just keep by your bedside um, if you're anti-gun, and you could really fuck someone up with these. Like you could even just stick them to a tree. Hey, and they'll stay. Okay, but steps are. All right, so I'm not gonna go through my whole setup, but I'll just do a brief like walk down. What? Um, using the gearhead bow been awesome this season uh so i do a lot of the same things that drew does obviously he kind of taught me how to hunt so we have a lot of the same <laughs> mannerisms um he also beat me up when we were little so ptsd so anyways i get to the tree i do the same thing i put the bow um i always have a carabiner right here on my saddle you take that clip it and i just clip it to the back of my saddle back here I got this silly winter jacket at the bottom because I wanted to show that, um, well, I get freezing cold. So I have the um, giant fanatic jacket, uh, but it's in, actually a little bit in the way right now. So I just clip my bow there. I wanted to show that I have this tiny little backpack. Um, all I do is basically clip my bow. I've got a little bit different system on my bridge too. It's the same exact system as the stock with the berserker, but I just take, um, I put a figure eight on the end of it because I like it nice and tucked away. And then I just tuck it into my waist belt to keep it snug when I'm walking in. Um, so that stays there until I climb the tree. And then everything else is pretty much the same. I'll take off my, I'll just swing my backpack around to the side like so. 
I have the step ladder strap already around my neck here when I'm walking in, so I don't have to take everything off. All I have to do is just unclip, unclip. This comes around, and then the backpack goes back on my back. So it's like a smooth little trick shot there. Mm -hmm. what? Yeah. yeah, way smarter. <laughs> so I didn't even have to take my pack off, and then I just I unclipped my step ladder bag like that. I've got my perch on the top here, so I would take that step out, and I would clip it on the side so it's out of the way, and then I would climb with my steps, and then that would be the second to last one I put on. So my favorite configuration is to have a perch with a step on my left foot and then a single step on the right um, obviously having a perch in the middle with two steps on the side is like supreme comfort in most shop opportunities, but I find myself saving a step and doing the perch on the left so I can get around the left side of the tree further with a single step on my right foot. And then I do the last step as my gear hang and I use the same bow holder as Drew does the Genesis one. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Everything else I do is the same, climbing up the tree, setting the steps. Um, so nothing really new to show there, but... That's basically how I do it. Oh. Oh, go ahead. This was already at five o'clock. What uh what backpack is that? Oh, this is like a tiny old little It's a balance pack, pack that she stole from me. Yeah, it's probably like fifteen years old. Mm -hmm. But I love it. Um what is the smallest tree you hunted with steps? Uh I used a perch on a small tree and couldn't get it canned over. So you can you can definitely hunt. Uh, it's the diameter of those. You steps, want, as long as your standoffs have contact, six inches of contact on the tree, you can cam it over and you can climb a tree. Um, I've climbed super small trees, especially on the river bottoms. You know that were they're super small trees, and say I was only six seven feet up. But as long as you can get those standoffs to bite in and you have room on that tree, um, you know it'll work. And I've also used the steps in presets. Uh, had a couple extra steps um, instead of bringing a pole saw, just boom, run up a couple little trees to trim some shooting lanes. But, um, I'm gonna go over the loops or not, real quick or not. Five o'clock. Any other questions? Send them in. Um, otherwise, we'll. Start wrapping. Oh, the only other thing I didn't say was I do the talked about it in the past couple of days, but dump pouch. I like it on my left hand side because I keep my lines and line girth hitched on the left. And then I go around the tree and I'm right hand dominant. So then I'm clipping with my right hand. So all those little things that like seem like they don't matter when it comes to having a system and doing it the same way every single time, uh, stuff like that adds up. So I always have my dump pouch on the left because I'm right-hand dominant, so it's usually like opposite, it seems like. Um, so I would take my lines in line out of the dump pouch. It's already girth hitched here around the tree, and then I'm right-hand, and it has the twist lock, so that's easy to lock in here. Then you climb. Um, I have the tether. Then in the bottom of the dump pouch, tether goes up, lines in line goes back in. So that's how that works for me. It works really well. Um, everybody's got their own little system yeah, so basically what you was saying everything is opposite if you're a right-handed shooter your strong side strong size on your left side um, if you're climbing you're gonna want everything accessible as a right-handed shooter on your right side so it's a little corpse but like we said just practice um, you know go to every tree you can imagine before the season and like we said now is the time to buy your gear start getting used to it um, throughout the winter in the spring when there's not much else to do and uh, really get familiar with your equipment, pack your entire bag, your entire gear, as if you're going hunting, go into the woods and just, just climb a random tree and see what we're talking about with, you know, getting up to your platform height. Okay. I don't have many shots getting back down, setting your platforms and your ropes and make sure everything's tweaked and everything. So that's uh, a lot of questions are how fast can you climb 20 feet? Well, that all depends on how, you have your gear oriented, organized, everything critiqued, and how much practice you've done. Uh, so, I, you know, we could scream up a tree a lot faster than a beginner, obviously, because we've done it hundreds of times. So, again, just practice, uh, 
And again, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Just critique your gear and have everything in the same spot, place for everything, everything in this place, and just have at it. So the, the best system for you is what works best for you. Can you show the bow holder and who makes it? Yeah, it's um, a Genesis 3D printing. Oh, they make we. <laughs> I sold a lot. I sold a lot. I sold a lot of bow hangers. Yeah, Austin, you owe me something, buddy. Um, but that went into a step. But I found that I would put my step to the side and hang my backpack off it, where our bow hanger would hang off that step. So it kind of be opposite. So then Austin did a lot of stuff for us. He made a holder for steps. I should go grab that. Two things on the bench. No, uh, the one full. So anyway, this is the bow hanger. And it works perfect with any webbing strap, and strap, or the step out of rope goes right into it. And it works great. It's perfect timing because everybody is saying so they this, want to see the knot. So, yeah, this okay. would go on so this side of the tree. And then I'd cam it over loose and then throw the rope. It just feeds right into this slot. And my bow would be on the left side of the tree. Or if you're lefty, it'd be opposite. So... What's going on? They want to see the knot. Everybody is, okay, is to really wants up. to see how to tie it and what is the knot. The twist. They want to see the rope twist. You want to bring that computer close? Yeah. Close up. Everybody move. <laughs> okay, so. First thing you're gonna do, you pull the step out of the bag. I usually have it on my left side. Pull the steps out, or the right, you know, it really doesn't matter. But if you're righty or lefty, you can switch it to either side. So I'd grab the step out of the bag, take my left hand, push the rope up, hold it right there. Because the biggest problem people do is they put the rope over the step, and that's where the step's popping up. You want to under the standoff. Go around the tree. The original version of the, the loop, the knot that we did was you'd go through the standoff. And again, I said, put it against the tree. Grab the tail end, go through the standoff, around the rung, make a loop, and pull it. Pull the step up, and you can feel the tension. So if you want to go looser, this is what that question about cold weather. Uh, this rope will not affect anything. It's very rigid, and you'll be able to adjust it very easily. So push it forward to pull it in, just wiggle it, pull it up, it's too tight. So I'm just gonna push a little, little bit out, pull that step up and feel, pull that step up above the line of the rope, feel where it's gonna go over center, equal contact on each standoff. That's the biggest thing. And then cam it over and that step's not going anywhere. The other version of the loop, Same thing, rope under the sand off, around the tree. And this is what I found is a lot easier, especially when you're climbing a smaller tree like this and you have this long tail end. You go around the tree, same thing, go through, pull this loop up, twist it counterclockwise, back down behind the rope, around the standoff, and pull. Pull that step up. And the more you do it, you're going to find where it's going to go over center. So I could crush this baby down as hard as I can. It's going to be rock solid, but I might not need that much. I'll let an eighth of an inch out. Pull it up. Cam it over. So very simple. And when you want to undo it, you can either pull that whole tail end out, or you can push this loop back down over the sand off. And it's off. And then on the way down, I would just... Either put it back in my bag, or a lot of times I just drop the step down. Awesome. Any questions come up? No, not here. Are you guys fans of Nader Sweaters? Or what? Are you guys fans of Nader Sweaters? And no, no. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they work. They work great. I don't, I don't use them, um, but if you want to, if you want to carry three steps in the woods and climb thirty feet, they work great. Um, I just carry more steps. Um, how much more comfortable is the two-panel 
versus a single panel saddle. Oh, uh, the beauty about this saddle is it's basically your single panel and two panel combined because you can you can lower the you can expand the seat. You can pull it up, pull it down, or pull it back in. So you're you're getting basically both in the same saddle. So by pulling the top up, you're creating a a higher waist belt. By pulling it down, you're creating more of a leg leg strap. What are the benefits over the Kong versus the Roteman one? A uh, Kong duck can go down to eight millimeter rope, eight to thirteen millimeter. The rope in one goes 10 to 13 millimeters. So by using the Sterling Oplex that we use, the Kong duck is rated for it. The rope in one will work. It's just not recommended. So any client product that doesn't recommend something, I would not recommend using it. Do you guys run a tether loop at eye level? I usually do above tether? my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I usually go right above my head. Um, but, you know, kind of like at the top of my head, but then it's all depend on the tree too. Sometimes I'll find myself a bigger tree. I'll go lower so I have more rope to get around the tree, um, but usually at level. Mm. Are you guys gonna make uh, a back band? Yeah, we have a couple of prototypes we've been messing with. Um, they work, they're comfortable. Um, hard part is though, when it's on, try and get a shot and bring your bow around, but we have a couple of prototypes. That we're working on um let's see appreciate the virtual demonstrations just purchased my wild edge step and looking forward to using them all right gary um and then dave collins good question how do you get around the battlement or set up perch i always feel clumsy climbing around it to get on top climbing around it so that's that's the beauty of the step so say you're climbing this way you put your platform right here and trying to get up to the platform Oh, shit. Just grab your step, pull it around the tree, and cam it over. So then you can step onto your step here and then step on your platform. So that's the cool thing. You just swing it over, boom. Either way, so then you can sidestep back onto your platform. But I see what you're saying. And Dave, you should come check out the shop, buddy. I think he was going to come this week sometime. Tomorrow. All right. Are you going to uh, – oh, what? oh, shit, wrong one. Um. What, what was the reason to, cho to choose to switch from a tree stand to a saddle? Oh, it's just versatility. So I, I started I started saddle hunting before it was cool like this um, because my buddy and I got into self-filming. Uh, so we started this company and I just, we were filming each other before camera arms and everything. So we couldn't afford to buy an extra tree stand for every set we had. Uh, we got tired of trying to kayak or canoe in or boat in with, multiple tree stands, it was loud, it was obnoxious. So I bought a arborist saddle that I converted into a hunting saddle. And uh, it just, the mobility is amazing. So you can put up as many presets as you want, and this is your one and only climbing harness. It's your safety harness, your tree stand, your lines and belt, it's everything in one. It's comfortable, you can shoot 360 around the tree. Uh, the advantages are just awesome. So when I leave the shop to go hunting, leave anywhere, I put my saddle on, my gears in my truck everything's packed i get out of the truck all i can do is grab my bag my bow and i'm gone i don't have a big clumsy tree stain on my back or a climber uh, so it just the compact the advantages of being so compact are awesome i'll add to that from the perspective of a female hunter um there's a lot of women out there that are badass and they bring their tree stands out into the woods they set everything up for themselves um, I was lucky to grow up with a brother who had a lot of presets. So that's how I learned how to hunt was out of his presets. And then, uh, by the time I was hunting, he'd already killed Pope and young deer. So it was like, I was just learning everything I could from him. And he would come and sit in his saddle above me when I was in a tree stand. So anyone who has a kid who's starting to hunt, you put them in a tree stand and you're in your saddle above them. That's a really great way. Yeah, if you have kids or whatever. Or put them in a little saddle. Or you put them in a little saddle. But it's a nice way to hang two people out of the same tree, and that's how we started. Um, and then just back to now that I'm hunting on my own and setting up all my own stands, um, just that freedom and liberation to be able to go out, grab my little tiny saddle, grab my little step set of steps, and I can go anywhere. I don't feel like shackled or chained to where I can, you know, and women are strong. We can do it. We can carry in stands. It's just like you don't have to. So I just feel really liberated by the fact that I can wear this little tiny saddle in to the woods and go set up anywhere. And so. the safety you're always connected. 
Yeah, you're always tied in. It's your safety harness. And it feels so I fall asleep in the tree. Uh, it's a it's a family <laughs> problem that we have where we're like self-diagnosed narcoleptics. Um, but when we sit in a tree stand, you have that like sensation where you're doing that head nod and you fall asleep. Um, you know, obviously not during prime hunting hours, but the early, early morning. Uh, and you get that nod and that feeling like you're going to fall a couple of stories. Um, with the saddle, you always have tension on. So if you are someone who falls asleep in a tree, um, you just get snug as a bug and you lean your head on your tether and you don't get that like I'm um, wake up falling out of a, a building feeling. So I think that's an advantage too. Anything else? Somebody here asked, uh, do you still use the open bottom? Oh, the bag. Do you still cut the bottom on your bag? Uh, yes and no. I'd say with, uh, with the bigger sets of steps, so like with a set of 12 or 16, I cut the bottom so that the rope would hang out the bottom, not pull the zipper down. But our new bags that are coming any day now have a locking zipper on it, so we don't have that problem anymore. So there's no need. Um, so the newer bag, locking zipper, so that the rope, the tension of the rope will not, weigh the rope will not push it down. But with smaller sets of steps, five, eights, tens, it's not going to pull the zipper down. And uh, Dave Khan says you guys doing this again tomorrow. Yep. So How buddy. many different lives is he on? <laughs> Dave great. is crazy. He's on all of them. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Dave don't mess around. Dave pays attention. All right. Good? Yep. Yeah. All right. So all right. Sorry. Wrap it up. Oh, get on the website. Buy some shit right now. Like we said, uh, we said this, I think, last night or the night before. It's uh, Right now, we're fully stocked. It's the off season. So right now is the time to buy. When we get to the busy season, we may have products that go on and off, in stock, out of stock. So if you're interested in stuff, you want to try stuff out, you want to practice, now's the time to buy. Uh, not just pushing it because of sale, that's just reality. We work with a lot of small manufacturers, um, such as ourselves. So things are hard to keep up in the busy season. But right now, I suggest buy, especially during the sale. Um, and you have plenty of time to practice. Awesome. That's funny. Yeah, I think you're funny. Uh, it's funny when he tries to think quick. Uh, so <laughs> we're on, this is day four out of five of the virtual trade show. Uh, thank you guys so much. Thanks for coming. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate your questions. Uh, this is really good, really good for us too. It's, um, we're going to take all the questions you guys ask in the comments and work on posting individual YouTube videos and answering those for to have a library going forward. Um, so thank you for being here. Thank you for asking your questions. And really, we're just the main goal is to promote saddle hunting. Like we just can you stop? Okay. <laughs> we just love love saddle hunting. We're all about it. We love the community. Um, we want to share it with as many people as possible. It's obviously a rapidly growing community, but get your buddies involved. Show them your saddle if you have one. Uh, like Drew said, the off season is the time to play and tweak and have fun with your gear. Um, so have a little fun with it. Figure out what works for you because it's different for everybody. So, saw three people here. We all have different systems, um, some com commonalities, obviously, but all pretty different. Um, and thanks a lot. There, if you're oh, we're going to do a giveaway. T-shirt. We're doing a T-shirt giveaway. I'm going to, Trev, scroll and pick somebody. And if they're live right now, they get a T-shirt. All you got to do is, is email us. Um... One that came to mind is Seth, K-O-H-U-T-H. All right, Seth, if you are online right now, um, shoot us a DM on whatever platform you're on. and we'll What if he's not? Or email uh, email Andrew at wildedgeink.com. So Seth, K-O-H-U-T-H on Instagram. All right, and that's not it. We're giving away Berserker at the end of the week. Uh, so keep coming back. Tomorrow's the last day. Of the virtual trade show, and that's it. See you. See ya.